Chinese police are physically abusing women, children and the handicapped. While evidence and accusations of torture are piling up. Chinese propaganda videos depict the country's law enforcement officers as compassionate and gentle. Yet when the press camera stop rolling, their actions often take a harsh turn. In this week's special report, we cover some of the many examples of Chinese police negligence for human rights and how that neglect has led to beatings, torture and even death. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. Concerns over China's human rights violations have been pushed into the spotlight on the world stage after the U.S. announced a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics. The Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games, given the PRC's ongoing genocide and crimes against uh, humanity in Xinjiang. The situation in Xinjiang is currently among the most publicized, high-profile cases of rights abuse in China. But it's far from the only one. Many more injustices inside the communist country have been brought to light, but often don't get as much media coverage. In this week's special report, we'll look at a few of those lesser-known cases. A warning, some viewers may find footage highlighted in this report disturbing. Many of the abuse tactics we'll cover are rarely seen elsewhere in the world. But in communist China, they are commonplace. And one of those abuses is torture by Chinese police. In fact, the practice is employed so frequently that the Chinese state had to announce countermeasures and reforms to curb Chinese police officers' use of torture. Sophie Richardson, the China director of U.S.-based rights advocacy group Human Rights Watch, explained that police are torturing criminal suspects to get them to confess to crimes, and courts are convicting people who confessed under torture. According to Human Rights Watch, some of their methods include being forced to spend days shackled to what are called tiger chairs or tiger benches. Former detainees told the rights group that police strap suspects to these metal chairs for hours or days, while depriving them of sleep and food. Suspects are left unable to move until the legs and lower bodies are swollen. In some cases, authorities subject people to the tiger chair for seemingly petty reasons. In this clip, we see a Chinese citizen strapped to the device during a police interrogation. By the looks of it, it's reasonable to assume that the immobilized man must have committed a serious crime. But that's not the case. The man was detained for writing comments on Chinese social media. From the officer's conversation with him, we learned that the man had posted derogatory remarks about Chinese police online after one of them confiscated another citizen's motorcycle. <laughs> As the interrogation goes on, the man eventually concedes and admits wrongdoing. <laughs> agreeing it was incorrect for him to criticize Chinese police. This is just one method of forcing confessions. Others go far beyond strapping a person to a chair. According to reports, Chinese police have employed the use of electric batons to shock a person's sensitive areas as a means of torture. To watch today's full special report, click the link in the description down below. We are working with Epoch TV and all special reports are published there in full length. Now we turn to today's latest news. The White House says a new bill will soon get President Biden's signature. The measure seeks to ban all imported goods from the Xinjiang region in China, where a million Uyghurs have been forced to work in labor camps. Uh, we have been clear that we, will, we share Congress's view that action must be taken to hold the PRC accountable for its human rights abuses and to address forced labor in Xinjiang. Uh, we've already taken action on the global stage uh, in that regard, leading an effort at G7, putting in place uh, financial sanctions and global and putting in, uh, in global Magnitsky visa restrictions. And I think that's evidence of our commitment to this. The bill is called the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. Congress approved it with near unanimous support. The House passed it last week, following Senate approval over the summer. 
only a single lawmaker across both chambers voted against it. In line with a bipartisan agreement, lawmakers will have to vote on an updated version of the bill before it arrives at the president's desk. The White House gave input on the changes but didn't comment on the details. Congressman Jim McGovern says it will be moved through both chambers and sent to Biden as quickly as possible. Beijing seized the Uyghur ethnic group's homeland in 1950. Since then, the Chinese Communist Party has monitored and jailed Uyghurs, using them for forced labor. U.S. officials have described what's happening there as genocide. A staggering figure has come out of Tibet. Almost 80 percent of Tibetan children aged 6 to 18 have been placed in state-run boarding schools. There they are cut off from their families, language and traditions. That's according to analysis of official data from U.S.-based NGO, the Tibet Action Institute. The organization's December report says the Chinese communist regime has established a vast colonial boarding school system in Tibet, which separates children as young as four years old from their parents. The report quoted one parent in eastern Tibet as saying authorities converted the village schools to nursery schools in 2020 and at the same time prohibited children from studying in their villages. These children aren't even allowed to return home for holidays. And according to a teacher from eastern Tibet, teachers must speak and teach all courses in Mandarin only. That's including nursery rhymes and bedtime stories for younger students. When these children go to primary school at the age of seven, hardly any of them can speak Tibetan. While another account details something even more sinister. A female boarding student says she witnessed cases of sexual abuse and violence inside her school. She recounted that men from outside the school, as well as some male teachers, would enter the girls' dormitories. She went on to explain that beatings were so severe and frequent that students were in a state of constant fear. The Chinese communist regime has worked to eliminate local Tibetan schools for a decade. They've arrested Tibetan school leaders, language teachers and intellectuals, seemingly to wipe out the Tibetan tradition. A European country is pulling its diplomats from China. Lithuania's diplomatic delegation to China left the country on Wednesday amid tensions over Taiwan. Worth noting, the nation is a member of the European Union. The EU's executive branch, the European Commission, responded to the move. We are following the situation um, and we are in close contact with the Lithuanian authorities. All uh, Lithuanian uh, diplomatic staff and their families left Beijing on the 15th of December in the morning. Tensions began to sour between Beijing and Lithuania last month when Taiwan opened a representative office in Lithuania's capital. It functions as a de facto embassy. Beijing soon downgraded diplomatic ties with Lithuania and demanded that the country end its new relationship with the island. Beijing considers Taiwan part of mainland China, though the island enjoys its own democratically elected leaders and constitution. Following China's demands, the U.S. stated that it rejects attempts by other countries to interfere in Lithuania's relationship with Taiwan. That's as relations between them grow stronger. In November, Lithuanian lawmakers visited Taiwan and met with President Tsai Ing-wen. The meeting sought to expand their partnership, both diplomatically and economically. By early December, Lithuania said Beijing had delisted it as a country of origin, meaning it started blocking all imports from the country. The action was widely viewed as retaliation, something Beijing denies. The same day, Lithuania confirmed its diplomatic boycott of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. As for its most recent decision, Lithuania said in a statement it summoned its top diplomat back from China. According to Reuters, citing a diplomatic source, the choice was made due to safety concerns for the Lithuanian diplomats. Their departure was described as a response to intimidation. China's foreign ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment. This isn't the first time the Baltic country has faced off against a communist regime. As part of the former Soviet Union, Lithuania has experience of breaking free from authoritarian rule and fighting for freedom. One of those cases came in the form of a pro-democracy protest against the Soviet Union over three decades ago. It's called the Baltic Way. During the demonstration, some two million people in the Baltic states formed a human chain, demanding independence from the Soviet Union. The chain spanned over 400 miles across Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia. Lithuania isn't the only nation building stronger relations with Taiwan. France is sending officials to the island for the second time in two months. 
A group of six French lawmakers arrived in Taiwan on Wednesday for a five-day visit. We wish to have exchanges in all dimensions of the relations between Taiwan, the EU and France on the economy, culture and all the issues that are at stake for our two countries. French lawmakers will meet with Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen and other senior government officials. Beijing denounced the visit, echoing earlier statements that China firmly opposes any form of political exchange between Taiwan and countries that maintain diplomatic ties with China. Beijing claims self-ruled Taiwan as its own territory and has hinted at intentions to take the island over by force. In the last two months, lawmakers from multiple nations traveled to Taiwan. Among them, the U.S., European Union, Slovakia, Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia. Russian President Vladimir Putin says his country's relationship with China has reached a breakthrough level. He made the comment to Chinese Communist Party head Xi Jinping during a virtual meeting between them on Wednesday. The two leaders agreed they'll stand firm in rejecting what they call Western interference. Xi Jinping also accused certain international forces of interfering in the internal affairs of China and Russia under what he describes as the guise of democracy and human rights. As Russia's relations with the West worsen, the country has cultivated closer ties with China. Putin told Xi that a new model of cooperation has been formed between their countries, based on such principles as non-interference in internal affairs and respect for each other's interests. On top of the discussions, the meeting also led observers to speculate about Xi Jinping's health. That's after he coughed three times in a row. Xi's cough is absent from Chinese state-owned broadcaster CCTV's footage of the meeting, but it can be seen from the Russian side's footage. A new study has found that two doses of China's Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine do not protect against the new Omicron variant. Results were published on Tuesday by the University of Hong Kong's Microbiology Department. For the study, researchers analyzed blood samples from 25 individuals vaccinated with Sinovac doses. Results showed that none of them had sufficient antibodies to defend against the Omicron variant. The study represents the first preliminary data that's been published about Sinovac's effectiveness against Omicron. China has vaccinated more than a billion of its citizens, mostly with Chinese-made shots. Other studies have also found disappointing results with the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine against Omicron. On top of that, the study analyzed 25 BioNTech vaccine recipients. Results show that five of the 25 individuals had the ability to neutralize the Omicron variant, though the vaccine's effectiveness was significantly lower at just 20 to 24 percent. And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.